Testing the results from two experimental studies that analyze the semantic variation and change that occurs within the Spanish and perfective domain in relation to the progressive to imperfective shift uh, in Spanish. So the puzzle is the following. Synchronically, Spanish presents two distinct markers. A progressive marker, as in 1A, and está fumando, and is smoking, with the auxiliary estar plus the gerund. And an imperfective marker, as in 2A, and a fuma, and a smokes, which is a simple present. So in the sentences in 1A and 2A, we see that the progressive marker is expressed in an event in progress reading, while the imperfective marker is expressed in a habitual reading. However, the sentence in 1A, ana fuma ahora, and the sentence in 2B, ana está fumando ultimamente, show that the presence of the given markers does not unambiguously predict the given reading, because the imperfective marker in 1B can also express an event in progress reading, and the progressive marker in 2B can also express a habitual reading. So both inflectional markers are able to express both readings in a two-by-two -two method. But there are preferences in the use of each marker for each of these readings. So what can account for this uh, distributional preferences? And one way we independently know that these markers are related is diachronically. Because historical linguistic literature shows that languages across the world participate in a grammaticalization process known as the progressive to imperfective shift. And in this change, languages go from having only one marker that expresses both the event in progress and the habitual reading, so all readings, which in Spanish was a simple present, to the recruitment of a marker to only express the event in progress reading, which in Spanish was the present progressive. Over time, these two markers get categorical domains of use, so that the new marker is the only option to express the event in progress reading, and the old marker gets restricted to the expression of the habitual. And a later stage involves the generalization of the new marker to all contexts, to all readings, until the cycle starts again in a kind of yes versus cycle way. So we can basically talk about three processes between stages. The recruitment of a new progressive marker, the categorialization between markers, one for each meaning, and the generalization of the progressive marker to the habitual reading. And today we will focus on categorialization and generalization. So again, we can ask what are the contexts that produce the observed preferences in each time period at each stage. But as we just saw, Spanish does not fit any of the stages properly. Because a simple present marker, the old marker, can still express event in progress readings, and the present progressive marker, the new marker, is already expressed in habitual readings. So what does this tell us about the system in which these markers participate, which prevents full categorialization, and what allows or already made generalization be on, on its way? So we will argue that the preferences in the distributional variation of these markers, which ultimately produces the change, are rooted in the structure of the meanings that participate in the change and in properties of the situational context that are underpinned by specific and mediated by cognitive pressures. So let's look first at the structure of the meanings that participate in the change. We assume here Dale's analysis of the progressive and the imperfective, which considers that both the progressive and the imperfective are operators that universally quantify over a regular partition of an interval. And the measure of each cell that is a member of the partition is a free variable with a contextually determined value. Then it is this variability on the partition measure, which is determined by context, what allows for the availability of the different readings, the event in progress, the habitual, etc. Also, while the quantifier domain, in the case of the progressive, is a regular partition of the reference interval, in the case of the imperfective, the quantifier domain is a super interval of the reference interval. So for the lexical entries here, in the case of the progressive, what the operator demands is that for all regular partitions I, uh, sorry, J, in the interval under consideration I, there is a coincidence relation between the proposition B and those regular partitions J. So, in English, that means that when a speaker gets a sentence under the scope of the progressive, the proposition extends over the reference interval, holds the reference intervals, basically. So if I say something like I'm giving a talk at the in flux, the proposition holds now and on the interval we're considering. In the case of the imperfective, the coincidence relation obtains between the proposition P and all regular partitions K in a super interval J of the interval under consideration I. So now when a speaker gets a sentence under the scope of the imperfective, uh, the proposition can hold, for instance, habitually. So on a super interval of the reference interval. So if I say something like, 
I eat dinner every night, that holds yesterday at 8 p.m., in two hours from now, and tomorrow at 6 p.m., and so on. So under this analysis, we can also capture the subset relation that exists between both operators since the proposition under the scope of the progressive entails that proposition under the scope of the imperfective since the reference interval is always a subinterval of a superinterval thereof. So in sum, the meanings of the progressive and the imperfective are related in a subset relation, both universally quantified over regular partitions of an interval, and the measure of the partition is a variable whose value is conceptually determined. So let's see a schema of how this would work. So in the case of the progressive, the quantifier domain is a regular partition of the reference interval. So when a hero receives a sentence like Ani está fumando, Ani smoking, it triggers an interval in the hero's mind, the reference interval. This interval by definition is constituted by regular partitions, all the J's there. And what the hero parses does is to map the proposition, the sentence radical, and a smoke to every cell of a regular partition of the reference interval. So in the case of Anna fumando, that means that the predicate coincides with every cell of a regular partition of this interval. So it's a series of smoke and events that are true at every small enough cell of a regular partition of this reference interval. In the case of the imperfective meaning, on the other hand, the domain of the quantifier is a super interval of the reference interval. So when a hero gets a sentence in the imperfective, it again triggers a reference interval in her mind but it also triggers a super interval of that interval. And just like the reference interval, this super interval is constituted by regular partitions, which are all the case there. So the role of the parser now is to map the predicate's meaning to every cell of a regular partition of this super interval, not of the reference interval. So for instance, in Anafuma, Anna smokes, the idea is that, Anna, uh, is that Anna smokes is a regular distribution of smoke Anna events on a super interval of the reference interval, which crucially allows for gaps between the smoking events and also allows for the events not to coincide with the pattern time. So what is the relation between these two meanings? We propose that both meanings appeal to the same two-level interval structure where an event coincides with partitions of an interval, and they are different in what they make salient. So while the imperfective makes salient both levels within the structure, the reference interval and the super interval, the progressive makes salient the reference interval alone. And we think that proposing a shared conceptual structure then grounds the process of variation and change that occurs between these two meanings. So now let's talk about the properties of the situational context that drive the preferences in the process of semantic variation. And those properties will be different in each stage, so we will look first at categorization and what's preventing its full development. That is, we will look at the properties of the context in which we can still use the simple present marker, the old marker, to express an event in progress. So we have shown in previous acceptability judgment studies that the distribution between the simple present and the present progressive to express an event in progress reading is constrained by contextual demands, and specifically that the simple present is only available for this reading when there is shared perceptual access or co-presence between speaker and hearer to the event described by the predicate. But why should shared perceptual access or progressive between speaker and hearer to the event at issue allow for the simple present to convey this progressive meaning? We believe that this is because properties of the situational context we're talking about are rooted in specific communicative, communicative and cognitive pressures. And our proposal <coughs> sorry, is based on the notion of perspective, that is the information that is perceptually available for a given individual from a particular point of view in space. And from a successive perspective, this can be understood to be the set of worlds compatible with an individual's belief at that time in that world. At the same time, we consider that grammatical aspect not only reflects the point of view of the speaker, but is also able to manipulate it, participating in a process that we call perspective alignment. And in this process, which we consider to be one of the general goals of communication, the speaker intends to align the hearer's perspective to her own, to make the set of worlds compatible with the hearer's beliefs more like her own. We propose that perspective alignment is a resolution of two communicative constraints that are always in tension, linguistic economy and linguistic exclusivity. But we take these two factors to be epiphenomenal. Linguistic economy refers to speakers' expectation that given their shared history, her perception and schematization of the world is the same that the hearers. So linguistic economy is a manifestation of common ground. While well, linguistic expressivity, on the other hand, reflects the speaker's knowledge that the hearer is a separate individual, and that consequently their minds are not identical, are not experienced in the context in the same way. 
which compels, uh, so from cognitive perspective, this knowledge claims a balanced the theory of mind, which compels the speakers to encode linguistically all of her intent. We argue, moreover, that perspective alignment, which is the communicative goal that is not linguistic per se, can be achieved by linguistic meanings such as the progressive, which makes salient the reference center, while in doing so bring the perspective of the hearer closer to that of the speaker. So under this analysis, then, when intending to express a progressive meaning, the speaker has a choice of using the Russian progressive marker or the choice of relying on non-linguistic contextual information and using the simple progressive marker. So in our first study here, we measure the time course of the preferences that we have found on the acceptability judgment task by a self-paced reading task. So we created a set of sentences that express an event in progress reading that display either the simple present, the present progressive, or the simple past marker, which we use as a baseline condition. And these sentences were preceded by two types of context. Rich context, which presented shared perceptual access between speaker and hearer, and poor context, which remained neutral with respect to this variable. We tested 176 subjects across three Spanish varieties. We have Latinx Spanish from Buenos Aires, Mexican Spanish from Mexico City, and Castilian Spanish from Madrid, uh, on 144 stimuli and 180 fillers. And we sampled subjects from different populations, different varieties, because the same language can partition the semantic space uh, of the imperfective in different but predictable ways. Our hypothesis is that integrating situational context information into the conceptual representation of the event, so using the simple present plus the context, would be more costly than mere flexible processing that provides the same information, which would which be the case of the present progressive. So basically, we expect to find no context modulation for the present progressive with faster reading times than the simple present, faster reading time for simple present marker in rich context than in poor context. And if we are to find variation across dialects, it should be in the direction of finding faster times for the present progressive than for the simple present, regardless of context. So simple present is bad, even with rich context. So these are the results. And um, you should focus, so basically, um, gray and black are the simple past with very high, uh, very slow reading times. And blue and light blue are the progressive. And red and pink are the simple present, so the darker is rich context and the lighter is poor context. So these are the results for Castilian Spanish. We found a significant interaction between context or marker one word after the verb, and the interaction is explained because <coughs> uh, we get slower reading times with poor context for the simple present marker in comparison to the uh, rich context of the simple present marker. We find the same for the other in Spanish. Again, slower reading time for simple present when preceded by a poor context, and that gets facilitated when preceded by a rich context. They get similar times to prevent the use of the present progressive. And we find a different pattern for Mexican data. There's no significant interaction one word after the verb, but there's a main effect of marker at the verb position where only progressive, uh, present progressive marking gets faster reading times and the simple present gets uh, times just like a simple past, so it's an unacceptable kind of thing, uh, regardless of the contextual information presented before. So the results mostly align with our predictions. The present progressive marking is the preferred marker across dialects and regardless of context. Simple present processing is facilitated in three of Latinx, Spanish, and Castilian Spanish when preceded by rich context, and the observed variation across dialects is in accordance with the grammaticalization path since in Mexican Spanish, the reading times for the simple present marker are slower than the reading times for the present progressive, as I just said, regardless of contextual information. So now let's look at the contextual properties that drive the generalization of the progressive marker. That is, let's look at what makes the progressive already acceptable to convey a habitual reading. What needs to be in those contexts for, this, for the use of this marker to be felicitous. And we have shown in previous acceptability judgment studies again that the distribution between the simple present and the present progressive to express a habitual reading is also constrained by contextual demands, and specifically that the present progressive is only available for this reading when the context satisfies the presuppositional requirement of estar, the auxiliary verb in the progressive the very first of Spanish. This auxiliary verb has been modeled as carrying a presupposition that requires the existence of alternative discourse situations at which the proposition does not hold. For instance, in the next here, we see that there is a relation R, <coughs> sorry, 
between an index i and an index i prime, and for the proposition to hold that i, it needs to be false at i prime. We then claim that the generalization process is driven by the following mechanisms. So since the start carries this presupposition, the present progressive marker, which has a start as its auxiliary, can convey both a habitual reading, given our shared conceptual structure, and the set of projected alternatives. This maximizes context set restriction and proportionally increases the expressive possibilities and informativity strength of the construction. So in this way, greater expressivity leads to an increase in context of use, which in turn shows a decrease in the context dependence of a star lexicalized presuppositional content. So again, we ask, can we observe this process of play in the real-time interpretation of these markers? We run again a self-based reading task based on our results of the acceptability judgment task for the habitual. We create a set of sentences that express a habitual reading this time that display one of these three markers, present progressive, simple present, or simple past again as the baseline condition. And the sentences were preceded by two types of context. Supporting context, which were context that explicitly provided access to alternative indexes of evaluation of which the proposition did not hold, and neutral context, which remained neutral with respect to the presuppositional content of its data. We tested 120 subjects across increased Spanish varieties, found more stimuli, 180 stimuli, and 90 fillers. And our hypothesis in this case is that the processing of the presuppositional content, as with the present progressive, will be more costly than processing of the simple present, unless the presupposition is previously satisfied by the context. So we expect to find no context modulation for the simple present, faster reading time for the present progressive in supporting context, than in neutral context, and again, if we are to find variation across dialects, it should be in the direction of finding no contextual modulation for the present progressive, and maybe even preference over the simple present. So these are the results. The colors are the same, but now we need to focus on the blue and the light blue. There's, uh, for Castilian Spanish, an interaction of one word after the verb, where we see that only um, the neutral context and the present progressive marker get slower reading times than when the present progressive marker is preceded by a supporting context, where it gets times just like the simple present. The same pattern is found for Rio Platense Spanish. So one word after the verb, we get a facilitation effect when we have a supporting context in the case of the present progressive marker. And again, Mexican Spanish shows a different pattern because there's no significant interaction of the verb uh, I mean, if we take out the simple past, and we get a marginal and significant effect favoring the progressive at the verb. So it seems that the progressive is even preferred for the expression of this reading. So again, the results align with our predictions. Present progressive comprehension for a habitual reading gets facilitated by supporting context in Rio Platense and Castilian Spanish. Mexican Spanish does not show that effect, but shows the present progressive marking might be even preferred over simple present marking. So even if generalization is already underway in the three varieties, in the three dialectal varieties, Mexican Spanish is again a step further in the grammaticalization path. So finally, as general conclusions, we have shown you a convergence of synchronic and diachronic questions by looking at the synchronic distribution of these two markers, um, which is also uh, diachronically informed. We explored how the simple present loses its ability to convey a progressive meaning in the last stages of a categorization process. And at the same time, we look at the conditions that allow for the present progressive to convey a more general habitual reading and perspective of meaning. To account for these patterns of use, we presented a proposal that is based on two factors, on a communicative goal that is a play in linguistic communication and that guides language use that is not linguistic in nature, which we call perspective alignment. And we say that this goal optimizes the tension between linguistic expressivity and linguistic economy, which we connect with specific cognitive capacity, theory of mind, and common ground. On the other hand, we claim that generalization is supported by the contrastive informativity strength of the combined lexicosemantic properties of the progressive marker, given the presence of the auxiliary style. And in sum, we showed a pattern of variation across dialects that is consistent with a model of variation that is embedded in a communicative system which can be seen during real-time comprehension and that is subject to identifiable contextual factors. <coughs>